Hi everyone and uh, welcome to Hobby World. As you can see, I'm currently working on a slot car track. This is my Borderlands post-apocalyptic themed slot car track. And there are also going to be a couple of elements from the Terminator franchise and some from Mad Max. And might even some more because I just love sticking out small details on the track. But that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about the fact that this slot car track looks pretty empty at the moment. And that's not okay, because this is boring. There needs to be a lot more stuff on this track. And one of the important parts I still need to do is make some barricades and fences. Because when we are racing on a slot car track, and I won't deny that that might get a bit competitive from time to time, and you're driving in your car and you're competing against an opponent and you're driving right to the limit of what the car can actually do and how well it sticks to the track, sometimes you will go a bit over the limit and meaning that your car will, when it gets to a corner, make this crash. And it will leave the table edge, end up on the floor and being broken. And some of the cars we race with are actually pretty expensive and we don't want them to end up on the floor being broken. So I need to build some barricades and fences for this track to prevent the cars from falling over the edge. So these tracks and uh, barricades and fences will of course be placed in corners but I might place some on the straights because there are points where the cars can fall off and it also looks very cool. Unfortunately, that means that I'm going to make a lot of barricades and fences. And the easiest way to do this, uh, I thought, also considering that I have 3D printed this part and that part over there and this part, I just decided to 3D print these barricades and fences. And uh, I found some very nice models from uh, Printable Scenery, which also made the checkpoint and the billboard. So um, I have 3D printed a lot and a lot of those, and I just need to paint them now and attach them to the track. So, in this episode, I'm going to paint up those fences and barricades, just to say that once more. And uh, then I'm going to attach them to the track, and I really hope that I've printed enough of them. And just to make it a bit more interesting, when they are attached, I won't be that hesitant to actually drive on it. So it could be real fun to try connecting the track up with the light bridge and the computer, and try and racing a couple of laps with a couple of cars to see if the track actually works and how well the barricades will stand up if a car accidentally falls out of its uh, slot. So um, I hope you're interested in following this. So um, please stay on the channel and uh, see what's in store for you. Yesterday I had a friend over and he helped me prepare all of these uh, barricades for the slot car track and uh, we had to remove so much uh, support material from the 3D printing process and we had to clean them up and there was stringing and there was everything um, that needs to be done. But uh, we managed to uh, prepare all of these parts and there are a lot of these barricades and they are very important to the slot car track as these are the parts that's going to uh, prevent the cars from falling off the track which would be rather annoying as uh, most slot cars are actually pretty expensive so you don't want to see it just drive over the racetrack and then fall over the edge and hit a hard fall that's a, <laughs> that's a very, uh, very annoying accident when that happened so, um, we have all of these barricades. I hope there is enough, but if there isn't, then I can uh, 3D print some more. It takes me around 24 hours to print a rather large batch of these, and I have access to uh, more than one printer, so I can actually do these pretty fast. Well, I'm about to spray paint all of this, and uh, before I start with the spray, I'm just going to prepare it all. I usually use a cardboard box like this, just one of those you get in the supermarket or somewhere, which is uh, it's free. And I use some tape. And the tape is actually really important. This is just a quick tip. I usually take a piece that uh, fits in size with the project I'm working on, as I'm probably going to use all of the cardboard box for this project, as there are a lot of barricades. I'm going to uh, take some rather large pieces of uh, tape. I'm going to I attach the tape to the box like this and then I can place all of the pieces I'm going to spray paint like this on the tape. 
This prevents them from tipping over when I start spraying because the spray itself can have this effect that it, um, that it will blow the stuff you're spray painting and uh, that can result in parts being sprayed and tipped over which is really annoying if you've just sprayed them on the other side that will create uh, imperfections in the paint so having the parts stick to the box is, uh, is actually pretty nice and um, yeah. as I am not worried about the bottom of all of these pieces as that's going to be glued to the track people are not going to see this so I'm just going to spray paint them on both sides and ignore the bottom of them. So right now I'll stick as many parts as I can to this cardboard box and I'm probably going to do a couple of uh, boxes filled with this stuff as I have several other parts than the ones laying here that need spray painting. I'm using this stuff which is basically a spray filler. I bought it in a car shop where they uh, repair cars and sell stuff for repairing cars and this is used to fix small dents in the car and then sand it down. So uh, I've tried this before, it works really well, so I hope it will work on, uh, on these barricades too. So let's get spraying. When, when using a spray filler like this I don't care if I get a bit closer to the, the objects. They are very rough and they are going on a post-apocalyptic track so I don't mind if they get a bit much too filler as the rust is probably going to cover it up. So for me it's more important that I, that I actually cover the, um, the layer lines. So it's just getting a really rough layer here of spray filler. You need to um, shake this bottle off while working on it because it's actually really thick. This is all of the barricades I've printed so far and I've spray painted them with a metal paint which will drastically reduce how much painting time I'm going to use on those because then I don't need to paint the metal part which is the part that's most of. I am going to do a bit of uh, extras on these. First of all I've taken a look at some of the barricades. These ones they are extremely nice. I really like them. The ones with the damaged car as a part of the barricade. But they are very practical to use in corners of the racetrack. If we take a corner over here and we take a look and see this will continue straight, the corner will turn. So I have decided to um, use a saw, I've got one right over here, nice saw, and then simply cut them up into two pieces by sawing it off right here between the car and between the rest of the barricade. So I'll end up having two parts like this. Then I can place them like that, turning much more into a corner. So that's one of the things I'm going to change a bit. It's only with these ones, because all of these have the correct size. I can place those in a corner like. I got a lot of painting done here this evening, and uh, this was very repetitive work. This is all of the base colors on all of these barricades and uh, fences and uh, this took a really long time and it actually doesn't look that well right now because this is just plain colors on these metal fences and barricades and it actually looked kind of dull but I am expecting that when I apply the rust effect got it right over here when I apply this stuff it's probably going to uh, look a lot better and uh, when the rust effect has been applied I am going to apply the uh, pigments to create the effect of dry rust and I'm also going to pick out all of the details on these parts and that's the thing that's going to make it look really good so with the car here for example I'm going to paint the windows I'm going to paint all of the small details headlights and so on and I think that's what's going to make the real difference. So the rust effect is really important here because this looks really strange if it isn't there.
Well, this looks really impressive. There are a lot of barricades right here. They actually take up all of the space on my work table. And um, they have been uh, finished to the stage where I can start installing the uh, lamp posts. And the lamp posts have been uh, 3D designed and then printed on uh, one of my Enderfree Pro printers. And this is exactly what a 3D printer is good for, making a lot of the same. So they, it can just keep printing these and make a lot of them in a very short time. So this is really great. This is the lamp and then we have to stand or post up here. I'm going to install 5mm LEDs in these and um, when commonly using a 5mm LED it will have a rounded edge on the top. This will create a spotlight effect but I wanted an ambient effect where the light was a bit more diffuse so I sand down the top and this is just a really good tip because when sanding down the top it will smoothen out the light and make it much more diffuse. I used that on the billboard over here with a really nice effect because instead of casting extreme light in three spots these three LEDs up here actually make the light look a lot more smooth and uh, all of the billboard is illuminated so I'm going for the same effect with all of these so I am going to um, install these LEDs I have sanded down in the uh, lamp post now and then I'm going to solder the resistors in front of them and after that I'm going to install the lamp post on all of these pieces or all of the ones where they are required and after that I'm going to do all of the details still they need to do a lot of stuff here they aren't exactly finished and then I can install it all on the track and hopefully I have enough of all of these uh, barriers Let's just take a look at the track. I have painted, printed, done a lot of these barricades and uh, unfortunately I realized that I still miss some. So uh, I'm going to print even more. I think uh, 10 or about that should do it. But I already have so many of them. They took a long time to uh, paint and print for that matter. And installing all of these lights that are placed around here on the track also took a good deal of time so um, it's beginning to look like a real track and I'm actually getting quite impressed by how this is going to end up but I have come to the conclusion that I'm probably going to skip the airplane in the middle because that completely falls out of the mood of the track so far I have the light bridge over here which is really rusty and this borderlands theme all of the barricades here are really borderlands like so they are also great and uh, the billboard in the end over there is also a great piece of scenery but the aircraft here it simply doesn't belong so I'm going to remove that and insert another set of terrain that will uh, match the rest more so I'm probably going to make all of this track, uh, uh, track a dedicated Borderlands theme which I think will be a, a good choice 
A couple of notes on attaching these barricades to the track. I'm using this stuff which is called Gorilla Glue and uh, the Gorilla Glue is an expanding glue making it perfect for a surface like this. Due to the flock on the surface of the onion surface it's uh, really annoying attaching anything to this uh, as, uh, as there will be created small gaps between the parts and the surface. The expanding glue will expand as you can see here and fill up that gap and make sure that the stuff you attach is uh, really well or attaches to the surface really well. So uh, I use the Gorilla Glue. After I've applied the Gorilla Glue I usually use a couple of drops of super glue in the edges to um, make sure that the piece of terrain stays where it is while the Gorilla Glue dries. Let's finish this episode with a presentation of the result of all the hard work. As you can see I have attached all of the barriers and I even managed to 3D print some additional scenery for the track. Unfortunately I couldn't find the time to make a real test run on the track, but I promise you that that will be in my next episode. So far I just connected a couple of cars to a power supply and let them run on some rounds on the track and this actually looks quite nice. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video, I really hope you've enjoyed the content. If you have any questions or feedback please write in the comments below. And once again thank you all for watching and have a nice day.